Hello, hello, welcome back. Some interesting earnings reports uh, coming out of the stock market right now. And you will see this one is about Intel, which reported its actually largest quarterly loss in the company history. Absolutely insane here that this is happening to Intel. After having a couple of earnings were already disappeared in the past. Now, it's lost a lot of its value, and this has been a, a bargain uh, for a while. But uh, the most recent quarters, uh, they are doing worse and worse. So this is something to definitely take into account. And um, you can take a look at uh, the stock to its uh, page here and see that the stock is still up about 3%. Now, I'm not sure w whether this will actually continue. Actually, this, uh, this is up even more right now. Maybe it's something about guidance. We'll see. But um, the thing is, um, the earnings, you know, even though, you know, they're horrible, I guess uh, expectations were very low. And uh, as I've said in the past, when expectations are fairly low, you know, you may still miss and uh, the, you know, the stock price can still go up. So this happens uh, a lot in some situations. Now, they reported first quarter results on Wednesday that showed a staggering 133% annual reduction in earnings percent. This is a humongous number here. This is a big fail, actually, in terms of uh, the EPS now, the loss per share was slightly better than the expectations, <laughs> which imagine that, right? Again, what I told you earlier, you know, if expectations are very low, you can still get a green over here. Now, Intel reported first quarter results uh, and uh, revenue dropped nearly 36% year over year. So revenue keeps dropping 11.7 billion right now. So it keeps dropping and dropping here. And um, if we take a look at our tool here and take it to our income statement, you will see that the company has been doing about 63, that's the fiscal year. So they did like 11, it looks like, for this uh, quarter over here. So this goes uh, down quite significantly for the quarter. So it's down about 40% uh, almost a year over year for the specific quarter, that is. That's significant. Now, still, you know, the loss per share and sales were slightly better than expected, is what I talked about earlier. Loss of uh, cent 4 cents a share that's adjusted versus a loss of 15 cents per share. The, the, the actual loss could be even higher here. But uh, um, a, a higher, a steeper decline was expected here in terms of a loss, about 15% expected, uh, 15 cents expected, and uh, 4 is what we got. And a revenue of 11.7 adjusted versus 11.04 here. So they recorded a net loss of 2.8 billion compared with a profit of 8.1 8 billion. As you can understand, there's a pretty, pretty huge difference here. Now, Patrick gets the downside on the hot side. Now, quite a bit now is about percent, so it's at about $31.50. I would like it if I would have cheaper price. As I said, it passed. It didn't really fall when uh, it was the um, information about the, um, the dividend being cut. I expected it to fall back then, but it had already fallen so much that uh, basically didn't move really, actually moved higher um, to, you know, to say uh, what actually happened here, uh, there. And... Um, I, I would, you know, if I if I would uh, enter this one, I would love to get it near 25 if possible, though, you know, I don't know whether that will happen. But based on what we're seeing here, based on the, you know, the results that they're having and their, um, uh, the reports that they're um, uh, announcing, yeah, it may be a little bit better than expected, but it's still pretty, pretty bad. Yet, uh, again, the stock price is uh, going higher, so... You know, if, uh, if at some point it reverses and it goes down lower, it may be much more interesting for a potential purchase. Now to finish this video, I kind of want to take a little bit of a look at what will happen um, with the growth of the company and whether it makes sense to buy now again because of the terrible revenue growth which has been growing in negative territory and it's getting worse and worse this quarter. Uh, we're going backwards. So as you'll see here, 70, 71, 77, 79, 63, maybe this goes even lower uh, later in the next few quarters. So what I'm going to is that uh, they uh, go with, let's just say that they're about their normal, 25 is about their normal, maybe a little bit more even. So I'm going to go 23, 24 and 26, see what we get, 25 and 26. And the free cash flow margins around 100. Again, we have the odds, uh, the odd one out right now where, you know, the company is losing money, but overall they tend to be at around 80, 90 and 100, as you'll see in this uh, little table here. And, um, the annual return that I'm going to be asking for, about 13%. And again, it is a company that is struggling, so it will have some issues. So the margins are not going to be pristine, of course. You can expect this to go through exactly um, as the projections are over here. But they give you, give you a very fair idea of what to expect from the companies, the thing, and that's the very important thing about it. 
So I hit calculate with these uh, values here, and you'll see that um, uh, with uh, you know with negative revenue growth, we want obviously to have as much lower value as possible here, about 32 and 45 for the medium and 60 for the high, with the current price being about 31 right now actually. So we're we're almost uh, we're basically there when we're talking about the low ones with even uh, negative revenue growth. And this is what I like about uh, Intel, frankly, the fact that the company is doing worse has actually dropped the price to a point where it becomes uh, a very solid buy potentially for somebody who wants to hold for a while. But it, it is concerning that the revenue of the company has been completely decimated. So it may be worthwhile to even wait it out a little bit in the case of a better price or just risk it and uh, risk it for the biscuit pretty much and just get it at a very solid price, at a cheap price pretty much and just uh, ride the wave and uh, hopefully Intel will go back to what they were doing previously. But um, these kinds of numbers here, they are significantly worse than expected, as you can understand. This is, this is nothing to sneeze at, like 103% annual reduction, that's a lot. And a revenue drop of uh, 36%, again, expected, but still, that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty high over here. So there is risk, there is definitely risk, but there is also the fact that the stock is cheap. So, of course, you decide whether you want to take that risk. I think it's a potentially interesting case here for adding a little bit to portfolio, but I wouldn't go overboard. I would potentially add a little bit, especially after they cut the dividends, it becomes even, even more enticing, more interesting to me because I'm not a huge fan of Intel paying out dividends. But um, they are losing revenue and... Um, the thing with losing revenue, obviously, if you're a shareholder, you don't like it. But if you're a would-be shareholder, you kind of like it because it's almost like you are resetting the company's um, uh, doings. So it's almost like you're starting from the previous year, years eventually. So if you go back to normalcy for the company, you're kind of probably going to be growing at a steeper pace, at a higher pace, which uh, would indicate that the stock could actually go significantly higher. Again, there is risk, significant so, but it may just be worthwhile uh, potentially risking it a little bit here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.